Shalom, damn it! It's 11 o'clock at night and time for Dave's Gone By, a comedy talk show on AM 1240 WGBB Freeport. It's not the best show on the radio, but let's face it, do you really deserve the best? No, so sit back and settle. When a man is born, he's born with the foreskin. But the complete man is to be without the foreskin. There goes the neighborhood. You got David Lefkowitz here. He's a Long Island arts guy. He's got his own radio show. Greetings from Long Island, where every highway is a sunrise. It's time for Dave's Gone By, an hour of comedy, talk, and music brought to you by Total Theater, with your host, Dave Lefkowitz. You've never heard anything like it, so sit back, relax, squeal if you must. Here's the host of Dave's Gone By, Dave! Tropical hot dog night! Like two flamingos in a fruit fight! Every cover of day! Whirling around at night! Well... There goes the neighborhood. Welcome, everyone. Welcome on this slightly rainy but amazingly balmy March evening, Sunday night, March 8th, 2009, to the 306th episode of Dave's Gone By, here on WGBB AM 1240 on your radio dial. Yes, we've done 305 previous us of these. I still never know how to quite phrase that, but uh, everyone's a little different, everyone's a little new and a little fun. I'm Dave Lefkowitz, and uh, I started this little baby back in October of 2002, and I'm still getting great enjoyment out of each and every one, uh, especially on this March 8th. We're just in time for Purim, and I mention that because our guest on this episode of Dave's Gone By is someone who, well... He was an actor, or trying to be an actor, this is about two decades or so ago, and kicking around New York, trying to get jobs in TV, and trying to get on stage, and nothing was happening for him, until, well, he started getting typecast, in a certain sense, as being Jewish. And he started asking himself after a while, well, maybe, perhaps I'm too Jewish. And that led to a whole other career, a whole revitalization of what he was doing, and it's been his calling card for a decade or so, or two decades since. His name is Avi Hoffman, and he's going to be with us. Um, probably, actually, I, I'm hoping, I don't know if we can get him in, but I'm hoping the rabbi will also be here, Rabbi Saul Solomon, who is the spiritual leader of Temple Sons of Bitches in Great Neck, New York. If he'll, he'll also step in and, and handle at least some of the interview, because he'll get some of the more cultural and uh, and... Jewishy things that I might not get, but you never know. Either way, Avi Hoffman going to be with us on this episode. Really excited about that. And if you've never seen Too Jewish, by the way, it was off Broadway for a year or so, a few years back. Well, Avi's back in town. That's the reason we're we're doing this tonight. He's going to be playing in Too Jewish at the Port Washington's. Gene Rimsky Theater right in mid-March. He's doing it for about two or three weeks, so definitely go see it and also catch Avi here tonight. That may actually be Avi on the phone, um, but I'm going to get to him as soon as we do our business here. By the way, also letting you know that on this episode, which is a theatrical one, not all episodes of Dave's Gone By have to do with the theater, but since we're talking to Avi and about Two Jewish, We'll also mention that Inside Broadway is coming up. We do that pretty much every week, where we tell you what's going on in Broadway and off-Broadway theater. And it's been an extremely busy week, so we've got a lot of news for you, a lot of gossip. Plus, I'm going to be talking about some shows that I saw over the past week or two, including Sleepwalk With Me, The Widowing of Mrs. Holroyd, and uh, there was another one. Oh, yes, Shipwrecked and Entertainment. So we're going to do little mini-reviews for you so you know whether or not to go catch these shows. And also want to tell you about the sponsors of this program, Hewlett Minuteman Press, the copy kings of Broadway since the 1970s, 10% off. For Dave's Gone By listeners at Hewlett Minuteman Press, they're at 1315 Broadway in Hewlett, Long Island. Printing, binding, copying, everything you need done. Go to Minuteman. Also, the Woodrow Delicatessen, num num num, they're at 1342 Peninsula Boulevard. That's the Peninsula Shopping Center, in case you don't know from the numbers. And boy... 
I ate there this week. I had their tongue sandwich. It was fresh, delicious. You get all the wonderful deli meats, pastrami, brisket, corned beef, roast beef, plus Aside from just regular roast chicken, you can get Polynesian chicken, Hawaiian chicken, you can get knishas and kasha varnishkas and hot dogs. I mean, there isn't food that they serve that isn't good and delicious. They're also kosher, but they're open seven days a week. It's the Woodrow Deli in the Peninsula Shopping Center. Go to the, their website, woodrowdeli.com. Notice that I'm not saying Woodrow Deli, because you got to leave off that second W for wonderful food. Woodrow Deli. Dot com. This program is also brought to you by Performing Arts Insider, the Bible of Broadway since 1944. Everything you need to know about the shows playing on Broadway, every little bit of information from when they're opening to how to contact the stars and the, the designers of the shows, plus synopses and letting you know what shows are good and not so good. Performing Arts Insider, the Bible of Broadway. Go to performingartsinsider.com for more information. And this program is brought to you by Fancy Schmancy Balloons for all your party decorating needs. Jeff Goodman, who is our usual guest co-host on the program, is coming back from Thailand next week, so... Get your party orders ready. I mean, I know we got St. Patrick's coming up, but hey, there's there's Easter coming and there's Passover and got to start thinking about graduations. If you want balloons and centerpieces for your party to make them look great, please give Jeff a call at Fancy Schmancy Balloons, 516-797-3229. That's 516-797-3229. Just remains for me to remind you to go to davesgoneby.org. That's our website, Dave, like my name, davesgoneby.org, to find out more about this program and to hear dozens and dozens of vintage older episodes of the show online anytime for free. Go to davesgoneby.org. Whew. Okay, got all that business ta- taken care of. Now let's get to the business of Jewish, hopefully, with Avi Hoffman, and we will do that right after these messages. Meow! I'm not an ordinary cat. I'm a copycat. I love to make copies. So my favorite place is Hewlett Minuteman Press. For three decades, they've been on Broadway in Hewlett, printing booklets, making business cards, designing wedding invitations, and making millions of copies. Meow! How good is Minuteman? Hey, I used to have one life. Now I've got nine. Hewlett Minuteman on Broadway opposite Lomans. Tell him Toner the copycat sent you for 10% off. Shalom, damn it! This is Rabbi Sal Solomon asking you, what are the two most beautiful words in the English language? That's right, kosher deli! Actually, kosher isn't English per se in delicatessens from the German, but screw that! Kosher deli, pastrami, corned beef, roast beef, tongue, brisket! If you have a good kosher deli, you're set! Well, I have a great kosher deli, the Woodrow, in the Peninsula Shopping Center of Hewlett, Long Island. Open seven days, even Shabbos. Everything freshly made in the store, available for catering and private parties, the Woodrow. 516-791-4033. 791-4033. The Woodrow. Words cannot express. In this world, you gotta give to get. Give Dave's Gone By just a little bit of money, and you'll get terrific advertising every week to listeners throughout Long Island and globally on the web. Call 516-295-1511, 295-1511, or email davesgoneby at aol.com to advertise on Dave's Gone By. Give a little, get a lot. Hey, what is too Jewish anyways? Do any of you know who Israel Berlin was? <laughs> Irving Berlin, that's right. Irving Berlin's real name was Israel Balin. And he wrote a song that was very, very popular on 2nd Avenue. It's too Jewish, it's too Jewish. Glaucoma when you can't see further than you know. Can somebody be too Italian or too Irish? No, 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 no. Two Vietnamese, no, 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 no. In the fireplace, a fire is burning, and the house is warm. And the rabbi, the rebbe, is teaching young children the Aleph Beis, the Yiddish alphabet. 
Is Chinese food too Jewish? Then give that man a bagel. <laughs> Ralph Lauren, the famous fashion designer. His real name? Lipschitz. Can you imagine if he would have kept his name? <laughs> Lipschitz jeans. The jeans for Jews. was out here. Charlie Jones was high. Dirty comes from Gittle. Freddy was a prime. There's a spirit in you connected to your name. A Yiddish stomach can set your soul on Hi, hi, I feel like clapping myself. Oh, this is so wonderful. Such wonderful music and spirit and feeling from the man that we are about to talk to on the telephone here on Dave's Gone By on this Sunday evening. By the way, I am Rabbi Saul Solomon, the spiritual leader of Temple Sons of Bitches in Great Neck, New York. And I am so proud. I am so filled with nachos and joy to be talking to the man who created too Jewish. He's never too Jewish for me and for us. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a big shalom to Avi Hoffman. Avi, Avi, are you there? Shalom, Rabbi. How are you? Oh, I'm, well, I'm, uh, you know, the aches, the pains, the, the sinus trouble, but other than that, am I right? How are I you? Un I understand. Thanks, God, more or less. More or less. This is good. Usually with me, it's less. Yeah. Unfortunately. I wish it were more, <laughs> but with me, I settle for less. That's my life. But what I can understand. you do? So new, but things are good for you. You're coming back to New York, at least for, uh, for a little time being. You're on Long Island, is this true? You know, finally, it's my bar mitzvah. Oh. <laughs> I'm finally having my bar mitzvah performance. Thirteen years ago, I wrote a show called Too Jewish. Too Jewish. And it played in New York, and it won awards, and it was very successful. And now, thirteen years later, I'm bringing it back to yeah. Long Island for a couple of weeks. To Port Washington? Isn't that a very goyish place, Port Washington? You know, I, I, Washington was a goy. <laughs> but a lot of people think he might have been Jewish. Oh. So you never know. Wait, now, wait. Abraham Lincoln, they also say might have been Jewish. But I got news for you. Christopher Columbus, they also say might have been Jewish. Well, he used to put the B and the H on top of his letters for That's the right. Hashem. I That's know right. this. Oh, his, I'll bet his real name was Christopher Columbowitz. I will <laughs> bet you anything. Plus, he liked Italian. If he, you know, I'll tell you, he liked Italian food. But if he liked Chinese food, definitely Jewish. That's, That's right. the way you tell. That's right. So, so now you're talking to a, an old yiddle here. So I know from where you're coming. But how do you go and do your show and interest the young people, the little mamses, in people like Molly Pican and Manasha Skolnick, and they've never heard of these people? What do you, how do you get that across? Well, first of all, everything in the show is explained. Everything in the show comes with, uh, with you know, a Rashi communication. Everything in the show appeals to everybody. And what's ended up happening is that people come to the show, maybe they're a little older, they remember Molly Beacon, they remember Menashe Skolnick, but then they tell their friends, they tell their kids, they tell their grandkids, and they start bringing their children and their grandchildren to see the show with them. And my show has become a bridge over the generation. And people love it, people, because it's, it's universal. Because I asked the questions, you know, I called it too Jewish with a question mark, too Jewish? Because what's too Jewish? There is nothing too Jewish. No, can somebody be too Italian or too Irish? No, oh, no, too Vietnamese. <laughs> no, no, you never hear that. So, Actually, you know, we Jews have a tendency to be a little overcritical, and I try to explore that, and it's a universal theme, and everybody loves it. I don't know. There's a grocer on my corner, and I think they're just a little bit too Vietnamese for me. <laughs> I don't understand what the hell they're saying or what they're charging me. That's, if they can't speak the damn language, that's too Vietnamese for me. But that's yeah. just And that's yet just you me. keep going. Well, yeah, well, <laughs> they, I need the things for fiber and uh, my Metamucil I get there. I, right. uh, you don't want to know. Yes. Yeah. So the origins of too Jewish didn't just come from your culture, did not just come from your background, but this play also came from 
poverty, in a manner of speaking. Yes, that's, I, was, I was in a very desperate situation. And my wife was pregnant with our first child. Mazel. And I was out of a job. I didn't have any money. I was deep in debt. We were evicted from an illegal sublet on the Upper East Side. And I found myself in a very difficult situation. And so in my desperation, I went to a friend who said, why don't you write a show? And I'd never written a show before. And I said, what do I write? He said, write what you know. I said, what do I know? Everybody keeps telling me I'm too Jewish. <laughs> and so I started exploring what it was about me that people thought I was too Jewish about. And it turned into a celebration of Jewish culture, Jewish music, Jewish comedy, about Jewish stories. My parents were both survivors of the Holocaust. And so, you know, I explore some of the, the darker sides of my Judaism as well. Were, were your parents in the camps or were they just in uh, Eastern Europe? At my the... father was in Auschwitz. Wow. And his family, most of his family was killed in Auschwitz. Right. My mother was born in Siberia in a slave labor camp in the Gulag. <laughs> oh, my God. And she ended up in a DP camp in Germany after the war. She was very young. And uh, they came from Poland. Her parents came from Poland, from Lodz. So I'm a first-generation American. Oh, my God. And yet I was brought up with this incredibly deep and beautiful, you know, this appreciation for this incredible culture that we belong to. And, uh, you know, I, I, would, I think it's a shame that we should lose this beautiful culture. So I'm doing whatever I can to, to keep it alive and introduce it to a new generation. And every 13 years, I think I'll do the show again. Is it? <laughs> it's good. You mean, nah, every <laughs> seven and a half years. You can split it in. Doesn't, you don't have to wait 13 years. It's too good for that. All right. It should be around constantly. It should be a perennial kind well, of a thing. Soon, you know, I wrote a second show called Two Jewish Two. Yeah, Two Jewish Two, right? And yes. now I just finished writing a third show called Still Jewish After All These Years. <laughs> <laughs> and so hopefully in the next several months I'll come to New York and I'll do all three shows. Oh, all the vi Oh, you could run them in repertory. That's it, right. That's oh, the be... plan. You're like so the nonsense. All of your listeners that want to invest in the show, they should give you a call. Please. Do you think my listeners have any money? <laughs> Please. Well, not anymore. Not after Bernie Madoff. My, my listeners didn't have money before Bernie Madoff. Uh... But, but, you know, I, I, I was going to ask you about that. Um... Because of this whole Madoff thing, and, and uh, I was reading uh, New York Magazine, a secular magazine, and these, these uh, readers wrote in their little poems and musical spoofs making fun of Bernard Madoff, and they yeah. filled them with Yiddishisms, and I got a little twinge of almost an anti-Semitic content from that. Maybe inadvertently, and maybe they were Jewish themselves, but there was already some little bit in there that the fact that he was... Jewish and, and, and from Jewish origin and background and used it, I'm getting a little more than the usual just kind of, oh, well, he was a bad guy and he cheated people. You know what, Rabbi? They don't need any excuses. And well, any excuse that they find, they're, they're going to use. You know, I do, a part, I do a little piece in my show about anti-Semitism. Anti when I get into talking a little bit about the Holocaust towards the end of the show, and I talk a little bit about the fact that, uh, you know, uh, 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 Ulysses S. Grant evicted the Jews from the great state of Tennessee <laughs> Get in, you know, in, in 1865. Luckily, uh, President Lincoln canceled the order immediately. So there have been anti-Semites for thousands of years. I suspect there will be anti-Semites for thousands more years. But the bottom line is we survive and we thrive and we do what we have to do. And yes, every so often a Bernie Madoff comes along that makes our job that much harder. Because, uh, you know, like you said, he's a son of a bitch. And he <laughs> took advantage of a lot of people. And I don't know how he woke up in the morning and looked at himself in the mirror. Um, but, uh, it was a know. gold-plated mirror. That's yeah. how he did it. Yeah. I mean, he put on his uh, gold-threaded shirt. But I think the vast majority of people do not look at a Bernie Madoff and say, ah, all the Jews are money-grubbing bastards. 
I think that most people look at a Bernie Madoff and say, here was a greedy son of a bitch who took advantage of people. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of Goyim who take advantage of people, and there are Jews who take advantage of people. And that's human nature. True. But we keep going. See, my tragedy is that I, uh, too, am a greedy son of a bitch, but I don't know how to take advantage of people. <laughs> if I could, oh my God, I would. Oh. I would be so, oh, I would be robbing widows and orphans, and I would be uh, picking the pockets of blind people, but I, I don't move fast enough because of my hip. And I can't do it, so I'm stuck. I'm stuck being poor and noble and, and occasionally wise, maybe. Well, I, I think I want to join your temple. <laughs> your, your temple his temple, Sons of Bitches, by the way, in Great I, Neck, New York. So I heard. You should, uh, I think it's a marvelous little uh, show. We're, we're very devout and violent. It, it's an interesting uh, combination <laughs> there. Speaking of which, <laughs> speaking of devout and violent, do you get... In your audience, the Hasids and the ultra Orthodox, or are they not? I never understand. Are they allowed to attend these things or not? What yes, is their you the know, thing? Ever since my sex change, <laughs> it's not a problem. <laughs> 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 no, I, obviously they are allowed to listen to men singing. It's they're not allowed to listen to women singing. Oh, because, I thought you, you know, were, oh, I did not realize this, I'm, honestly. So that's the thing. They can go see you because you're absolutely. a boy chick. Absolutely, and when they come to see my shows, they love them. And they schlepped their families, all 25 of them, to come and see the show. <laughs> but if you All were, the kinderlach, they well, come to see the show. If you were to bring a girl on stage, though... No, that's not allowed. As long as she doesn't sing. I mean, it's okay as long as she doesn't sing. Oh, um, my... I'm thinking now to, uh, to the Chabad tele Teleton that I watch every uh, year. Yeah, and I'm trying Chabad, to think. I, yeah. Chabad's a little different, but no, they're not allowed to hear women singing. They can, the women can tell jokes, though. The which women is can tell jokes. As long as they don't sing, we're good. I never thought this is. Ha, you you know, taught it's me like something the here. siren song. You know, it's like the old siren song of the sailors. And when they heard the, uh, the mermaid singing, they uh, ran into the rocks. So this is the same problem. Did you hear about that mermaid woman, by the way? This is completely off topic, but I couldn't get over this. They had this on the news. Um, there's this woman, she's in her 50s, and she's a paraplegic. She, she got the legs cut off for some reason. I don't think it was aesthetic. I think she had to have her legs cut off. It wasn't a choice that one day, hey, I don't like my legs, I think I'll cut them off. It was a medical thing. And she knew these people who were theater-type people, and they built sets and costumes and things. Do you know what she did? This woman, this is a true story. I, I tell Help you. me out here. You're supposed to say, no, I don't know. I tell don't us, Rabbi. No, I never heard about it. There you go. So she, they built her a prosthetic mermaid tail. Wow. And now when she goes swimming, she goes. She swims. She's a mermaid. Wow. I don't That's know. A beautiful I, story. It, it's bizarre, but I don't know. I find this. Uh, it's all on. You can go on YouTube and. Or, is she, she Kusha Lepesa? I don't think she was Jewish. A Jew Kusha would not. Fish mermaid. Because um, she only swims on on. She must be Catholic because she only swims on Fridays when they can fish. So I don't even know. <laughs> all okay. right, we're going to have Gefilte Mermaid this weekend. <laughs> I was going to go with another fish joke, but I mean good here. So. Let me ask you, you are married, you have more than one child now? I one have two little girls. Mazel girls? I said one's not so little anymore. Oh, well, and what's her phone number? No, I'm uh, kidding. I just teased you, I you know that. But, okay, you're an actor, right? You're doing the two Jewish, you, you're mostly in Florida with a the theater that you're working with. Right. How do you have a family and be an actor, and how does that all work? Well, thank God, so far it's, it's working. Um, it works because I, w I, I stay as, at home as much as possible. And, uh, you know, the times are tough now, so i got to travel again. And that's why I'm coming to Long Island. Uh. But generally speaking, I... Uh, so I desperation drove you back to Long that's Island. That's right. Desperation <laughs> has made me write a new show. <laughs> and now I'm coming to Long Island. Oh, um, my God. No, but, but, but Long Island is beautiful, and the people there are very nice. And uh, hopefully they'll all come and love the show. Alibi. Just reminding people, we're talking to Avi Hoffman, who is the creator and star of Two Jewish, that is playing at the Gene Rimsky Theater in Port Washington, New York. From when to when? Uh, it opens this coming Thursday, the 12th of March, and runs through the 27th. So you have about uh, three weeks to three go weeks. see it. Don't be lazy. Three weeks. 
I mean, so I have to Purim, which is... Pur- do you have any Purim? Do you celebrate Purim, or is it just a day? You know what? The whole show is Purim, number one. Oh, uh, good point. And number two, Purim is one of my favorite holidays. Number one, because we all get to get drunk. What other holiday are you allowed, not only allowed, but you're expected to get drunk? Well, uh, Passover is, almost, but... And I also... Well, Passover a little bit, but here you have to. Here you can get poop-faced. That's right. Oh, yeah. And the other thing is, we get to dress up in costumes. I love getting dressed up as Esther Amalkin. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You get dressed up <laughs> as Queen Esther. Well, you know, actually, I don't anymore. My mother, when I was a young boy, she always wanted to have a girl. So she would dress me up as Queen Esther every poor. <laughs> and um, it's amazing I didn't turn out gay. <laughs> Because uh, that's what would have expected from uh, getting dressed up as Queen Esther. What did your father say to this? I mean, he saw some horrible things in Auschwitz, but his little boy dressed as a girl, he must have been like, this is too much. He actually appreciated it because his father, my grandfather, who I'm named after, Avrom Avrom Chaim Itzkovich, my grandfather was a Malabit in the shtetl, and he used to do a Purim spiel every year which is why my father always used to say that I got my talent for my grandfather. And, and as doing the Purim spiel, my, my grandfather used to, have to, used to have to get dressed up and get all the other Hasidim Lach from the shtetl to dress up as the characters in Purim. And so one of the... And it had to be men. It couldn't be women. So they had to dress up as Esther Amalke, Queen Vashti, Mordechai, Homen Arushe, and, uh, you know, Achashverish. And it was always a beautiful experience, and my father actually appreciated it. So That's, yeah, You turned a potentially perverted story into something nice. I, that, was... I try to do that as much as possible. <laughs> but, um, let me ask you also, um, your thoughts. Now, you are, you turn to being typecast as too Jewish. You, you went and made that into lemonade. You know, they gave you this lemon of being um, a certain type that perhaps Hollywood wouldn't necessarily want as a leading person or, or maybe uh, you know, Broadway didn't see you as a certain way. So it's like, ah, you're too Jewish, too Jewish. What does it mean? You turn that into lemons. But now that you've done the too Jewish and the three different shows, do you, uh, what other things do you do in oh, the theater I- and in the acting? Oh, I've done every imaginable role that uh, that I have wanted to play, from you know Jewish Hang a gambler. Role. I, no, I can't. Well, no, not that. Um, but uh, you know, I I've played the pseudolist in a funny thing happened on the way to the forum, oh. and I've played Al Lewis in the Sunshine Boys, and I've done uh, the Odd Couple, and I've done Jacques Brel is alive and well and living in Paris. Oh, that's I have nice. I, I've done. I remember this, yes. I've done a lot of different parts, a lot of different shows, and, uh, you know, thank God I have a good time. I love what I do, and I do what I love. You're a little... How did you do the Sunshine Boys? You're about 20 years too young for that, aren't I you? I did it in makeup, and Bruce Adler, God oh, no. rest his soul, all of us show them. Bruce Adler and I did the Sunshine Boys together. It took me an hour and 15 minutes every day to get into my age makeup. Good. Because you know what will happen. You'll do it ten years from now, and then it'll take half an hour. That's and then right. in five more years, it'll take ten minutes, and then you'll have to get and young then I'll makeup. Be dead. <laughs> okay. Oi, and no. then it'll be easy, because then I won't have to do anything. <laughs> Mr. Gedach, don't even <laughs> think it. You're sicker um, than I am. Anyway, yeah. You know, so I've gotten to do a lot of different kinds of shows, and I enjoy my work. And do you actually run a theater in Florida? I have a theater company in Florida called the New Vista Theater Company. We're right now. We're based in uh, Boca Raton, Boca. and God oh, willing, Boca. if we survive, uh, we will finish out our season and have another one next year. All of a- well, I mean, uh, are you in danger, or is it just tough times and you're coming well, back? Right now, everybody's in danger. Um, I mean, there's some more than others, uh, but it's it's very very rough out there right now. Aye. Everybody knows that the squeeze is on, and the first the first. Uh, industry to really feel that squeeze usually is the theater um, because for many people going to the theater is a luxury so that's why we've tried to keep our ticket prices lower we try to make it affordable 
I know that there have been many, many different kinds of promotions for my show in Long Island. Tickets are anywhere from $36 to $18. Oh, high and double you know, high. high and double high. Um, and, and we're trying to get families in, and we're trying to get people to really come out and forget their troubles for a little while, because you'll come to my show, you laugh, you have a good time, maybe you'll shed a tear or two, and you will forget your troubles, I promise, for at least 90 minutes. You will forget your troubles, they'll go away, and you'll have a great time with Avi Hoffman. Well, we have had such a great time and forgotten our, my many, many terrible troubles, at least for these few minutes, by having you here on the radio program. So please, everybody, go see Two Jewish at the Port Washington Gene Rimsky Theater uh, over the next three weeks. Wait, wait, is there, by the way, you have a website, right? Everybody, please yes, go. It's TwoJewishLI.com. That's T-O-O, Jewish, L-I, for Long Island, dot com. Or, or they can call on the phone. See, we still use telephones sometimes. Sometimes. 516-767-6444. I... 516-767-6444. I am dialing right now. Good. So if the line's busy, wait a minute and everybody call back and get your tickets to Two Jewish. Avi Hoffman, all I can do is wish you such a, a fantastic and happy Purim to you, your two young, beautiful children. Well, one is not so young, so, uh, and, and, and then your, your lovely wife. Well, I'm assuming she's lovely. I, I'm only imagining, but Absolutely. she must. I'm sure she's lovely. She's beautiful. Oh, beautiful. Oh, a Shane Amadel. I have been married for 49 years. I'm still in love with the same woman. If my wife ever finds out, she'll kill me. <laughs> that dumb bum. I've heard that joke 49 times. I still love it every <laughs> time, damn it. Avi Hoffman, a prayer and a blessing that you are in our lives. Keep doing what you're doing, and thank you so much thank for you, being Thank you, Rabbi. Oh, God bless you. Have thank a great you, one. We talk about it, we dream about it, we even sing about it. Don't let the schmaltz get in your eyes, don't let the lot get in your socks. And cheese goes with princess and eggs with salami. Don't let the schmaltz get in your eyes, or you look like a dream all sweet with sour cream and you know, let's tell it, you're the one for me. All right, everybody, sing after me. Too many bagels. Too many bagels. Too many seltzers, too many seltzers. Just like a blink, you're full of gas. Just like a blink, full of gas. If I've got too long and your pivot starts to jump, when the song come out, I'll bring the stomach bomb. This song was transplanted from the old country to the new world. And it was written by the father of Yiddish theater, Abraham Goldfaden. And I've always felt that this Yiddish song, maybe more than any other, somehow personifies the plight of the entire Jewish people. It's all about a widow, a mother. She's sitting all alone in the corner of the temple, singing a lullaby to her little baby boy, Yidale. And she sings to him all about a pure white billy goat, a tzigale, right under the boy's crib. And that little goat, that tzigale, will take the child off to the marketplace to buy what was in those days a great luxury, raisin and almond. I have performed all over the world, and everywhere I go, I find my people, the Jewish people. And everywhere you find us, you know you're going to hear about us, right? Because, well, we're always getting involved. If you see him walk past wearing schmaltz on his vest, oy, that's Morris. <laughs> if you smell his bouquet and he's wearing his bouquet, oy, that's Morris. And Moses is looking out at the Red Sea, and standing right next to him is his press agent, Murray. <laughs> and Moses turns to Murray and says, Murray, 
Where are the boats? <laughs> If they asked me, I could write a book. Well, they did ask me, and I did write a book. A collection of my comedies called Marriage, Babies, and the End of the World. If you like farce, there's The Triple Wedding. If you like dark comedy, there's Last Respects. If your taste runs to the absurd, Blind Date. Something for everyone in Marriage, Babies, and the End of the World. $20 hardcover, $12 soft. Buy it now at 516-295-1511 or through the Dave's Gone By website. Oh my god, this is terrible. What? There are a hundred and sixty-eight hours in a week, but Dave's Gone By is only one hour long. I know, I'm just on Sunday nights. But that's not enough. Well, why don't you just get my CDs? CDs? All my complete shows are on compact disc. Eleven dollars a piece, or less if you buy more. Just go to davesgoneby.org. Fully packaged, they make a nice gift, too. Wow, my depression is cleared. Great, but not my psychosis. What chicken is this? Inside Broadway, brought to you by Performing Arts Insider and TotalTheater.com. Yes, indeed, we do go inside Broadway on Dave's Gone By for all the theater news on and off Broadway every week to let you know what's going on. Even though these are tough and difficult economic times, there's a lot of stuff going on in the theater, some good, some bad, and we let you know what it is. Well, there is a new play on Broadway. Yes, not a musical, not some big old revival, a brand new play. It's called Impressionism, and it features Joan Allen, Jeremy Irons, Marsha Mason, and Andre the Shields. Wow. And it opens this Thursday at the Gerald Schoenfeld Theater, and the plug is Oh, it's a romance. It's between a photojournalist and a gallery owner. Sounds pretty high-toned, but entertaining. Check out Impressionism. Also, Jane Fonda is back on Broadway. She, uh, by the way, was Tony nominated way, way, way back then in the 1960s for a play called There Was a Little Girl. In this show, she's in a play called 33 Variations, and she plays a woman who is investigating Beethoven's life. And uh, the co-stars include Zach Grenier, or might be Grenier, not sure how he pronounces it. Really terrific actor who's been kicking around off-Broadway for years. And I, I can totally picture him as Beethoven. I'll bet he's good. And then Samantha Mathis, Mathis pardon me, is also in the show. 33 very open... Ooh! Blah, blah, blah. Rent at Lips tonight. 33 Variations opens tomorrow, Monday, at Broadway's Eugene O'Neill Theater for a limited run through late May The piece is by Moises Kaufman of uh, the Laramie Project fame. And I will say this, you know, I host a weekly cabaret show on uh, time, in Times Square on Saturday nights at 6 at the Times Square Art Center between 42nd and 43rd Street. And so please, everybody, come on down and see me host the Stage Buddy Show Saturday nights at 6. It's free to get in and free beverages. and No, excuse me. Not, you pay for the beverages and the food, but there's no cover and no minimum. So if you don't want to eat anything, it's cool. You can walk in, walk out, have the show for free. But we'd like you to buy some food and stuff, and besides, the food's good and the drinks are good, so do it. Anyway, the reason I bring that up is, last night, one of my guests was Rosalind Friedman. She's been on this program a couple of times, also on our Tony shows. She's a theater critic out in Connecticut. She's also on the board of the Outer Critics Circle. So I asked her what she thought of 33 Variations, because she had just seen it yesterday afternoon, and she couldn't rave about it more. She said it was a good, interesting play. The acting was fine. She loves seeing Jane Fonda on stage. So, you know, already some good word of mouth filtering forward for um, 33 variations on Broadway. We've also got another Broadway show that's opening a week from today, next Sunday, Blythe Spirit, the Noel Coward play, is going to be opening at the Schubert Theater. Remember, the old home of a chorus line on Broadway and play there through early July. Dig who's in the cast. Christine, Bur uh, Christine Ebersole, Rupert Everett, Jane Atkinson, and Angela Lansbury. Wow, Angela Lansbury still back on Broadway in uh, Blythe Spirit. That's opening Sunday next on the 15th. Now, um, all this exciting news, all this fun news, unfortunately there's been some bad news too. First of all, Robin Williams, he was, I was all excited. We were going to say, hey, he's going to be doing a stand-up comedy show on Broadway. He's bringing his um, solo show there in April. And he was going to do five performances, and then it was sold out immediately, so they, he added a couple more. And then, he wasn't feeling so hot, 
ended up going in for open heart surgery and postponed his entire tour. So unfortunately, for those of you who did buy tickets or who were hoping to do this, going to have to wait a few months to see Robin Williams, but certainly we hope that he's, uh, his weapons of self-destruction will be rebuilt quite soon, and maybe we'll see him in the fall. Uh, also, speaking of things coming back, there was a show called um, Flamingo Court, that played last season off-Broadway. It was three one-act plays, two of them comedies, one sort of a tragic comedy, and uh, they were by Luigi Creatore, and they got surprisingly good reviews. It was a little summer show, not meant to be anything big. It, it starred Jamie Farr and Anita Gillette, and audiences really liked it, and some of the critics did too. It wasn't bad, and it was good enough that it had an extended run, and now they're bringing it back for the spring. It's coming to New World Stages in mid-April. This time it doesn't have stars in the cast, so you wouldn't have heard of the people on stage. However, they also lowered the prices a little, so you might want to check it out. The uh, It's called Flamingo Court at New World Stages starting in just a couple of weeks. Well, I wish also another happy thing. Happy birthday. Happy one-year birthday, or Broadway anniversary, really, to In the Heights, which opened back on March 9th, 2008. It was the little show that could, because back in just two years ago, it was off-Broadway in a weird sort of big theater that nobody really went to because was out, out of the way. But you could tell when you went to see it, even off-Broadway, that they had big plans for it because it was really, really well-produced and it was this big musical and it was exciting and people were thinking, you know, this can't stay in this off-Broadway theater out of the way here. This has got to move to Broadway. Well, it did, and it ended up winning the Tony Award. So, um, happy, really just happy news for In the Heights. Um, is still going strong at the Richard Rogers Theater on Broadway after its one-year anniversary. Now, um, some finally, on uh, the news portion of Inside Broadway, we do have to pay homage to uh, the saddest news of the week. On March 4th, this past week, Horton Foote died at the age of 92, and apparently he was writing to the very last day of his life. And he was all there mentally, to the end of his life, and physically he was pretty okay, even towards the very end. Um, he was born in Horton, Texas, and wrote most of his plays about this area of Texas, uh, given usually a fictional name, and sometimes from the same extended family. And he'd write about them all with intricacy, but also delicacy, and, you know, he had a, an amazing sense of humor. We think of him as such a quiet man working in such miniature. But there was also a boisterousness about the people that he wrote about. For me, and I think for the whole world, Horton Foote will live forever in honor and grace just for being the man who adapted the screenplay of To Kill a Mockingbird. He took... Um, the book, and he was the one, along with director Robert Mulligan, who created one of the great films, maybe the greatest film ever in my mind, uh, just a perfect, perfect adaptation of Harper Lee's book. So we thank him for that, but he also, he, if he had only done that, he would be a legend to be treasured. But he also was Oscar-nominated for The Trip to Bountiful. He wrote that. He also won an Oscar for writing Tender Mercies, the Robert Duvall film. He won the Pulitzer in 1995 for The Young Man from Atlanta. Not that it was such a special or wonderful play, but it was just indicative of the kind of quality plays that he wrote again and again and again. He had another one on this season called Dividing the Estate. Was it a really exciting new American play? No, but it was relevant, it was amusing, it was smart, and it was a good play. And that's what he did. He wrote good plays. Um, in a 1986 interview with the New York Times magazine, Horton Foote said, quote, I believe very deeply in the human spirit, and I have a sense of awe about it, because I don't know how people carry on. I've known people that the world has thrown everything at to discourage them, to kill them, to break their spirit, and yet something about them retains a dignity. Well, you know, he, he writes his own lovely epitaph there, so we thank 
Horton Foote for years of wonderful writing and for his graciousness as a person. I, I met him once or twice. And also the lucky thing for us is that even before he passed away, Signature Theater in New York, the Off-Broadway Theater, had plans and are continuing with plans to take nine of his plays that are sort of interrelated cut them down a little bit, and run them in repertory all season long. So you're going to check that out pretty soon. Anyway, bye to Horton Foote, and uh, we have to take a little break from Inside Broadway, but we'll be back with more Dave's Gone By right after this message. Broadway, off-Broadway, cabaret. These are magical words conjuring up a universe of great entertainment. If you want to know everything about what's happening on the stages of New York, Get Performing Arts Insider magazine. For 61 years, Performing Arts Insider has been a bible of the industry. When are shows opening and closing? What are they about? Who's in the cast? Designers, writers, composers, contacts for producers and managers, box office info, parental guides, everything you need to know if you care about theater, opera, cabaret, and dance. As the chief editor of Backstage put it, Performing Arts Insider is who, what, where, and when all the facts at your fingertips. For more information, to subscribe or get a sample issue, call 516-295-1511 or go to performingartsinsider.com. It is exactly midnight here at WGBB Freeport. It's Dave's gone by. I just got a couple more minutes here. Don't have time to do all the stuff that I wanted to on Inside Broadway, but I do want to mention a show that I saw just this past weekend called Shipwrecked and Entertainment, The Amazing Adventures of Louis de Rougemont. Unfortunately, it closed on Sunday, and I can't say that I give it this enormous recommendation, but it's quite a fun show, quite clever. It's by Donald Margulies, one of our more consistent playwrights, and it's this neat story of this man who may or may, be, may not be making up all these amazing adventures of his life that he's telling us about. Now, it may be completely true or completely false or somewhere in between, but it all involves his leaving home in England and then um, getting shipwrecked on a boat and then living with an aboriginal family and saving their lives and then trying to come back and then all these weird, wild, crazy adventures, including riding a tortoise and then making it go left and right in the water just by poking it gently in the eye. Well, little little things like that, but there's a lot of stuff done all on stage with sound effects and people in the old-fashioned theatrical sense of the word, like to, to have a thunderstorm, they'd be flickering the lights and they'd be holding shakers of, of beans in them to make the noises of the shh of the water and and, um, the metal plates that they go back and forth to make the thunder sound. So it's theatrical in a really old and wonderful sense. Um, It's kind of a children's theatery piece, uh, both as itself and as presented. So I I can't give it a whole recommendation as grown-up theater, but boy, oh boy, if you have someone who's like five to 15 years old especially, who might be interested in the theater and looks like they're, they have that bent. It would be a terrific show to check out maybe if you have a local theater company that's thinking of doing something um, because it can be as inventive and creative with putting it on as you please. So just, just a little kind of a recommendation there. I wish you could all get to see it if you, you weren't able to while it was running at the Primary Stages Theater on 59th Street. But uh, it's called Shipwrecked and Entertainment, and give it a look if it starts popping up regionally or locally. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you more about some of the other shows I saw on an upcoming edition of Dave's Gone By, but we kind of have to close the show. So I'll be right back after this message as we go outside of Inside Broadway. We've just been inside Broadway, thanks to TotalTheater.com and Performing Arts Insider. Shalom, damn it, shalom, damn it, that's the name of my TV show. Twice a week on cable vision, here is what you need to know. See the one and only Rabbi Saul Solomon on TV. Wednesday mornings at 8 on Channel 115, Friday mornings at 4.30 on Channel 20, in New York City, 1.30 Sunday afternoons on Channel 67, or watch every show anytime on YouTube. See all the info at shalomdammit.com. I read the Torah, I tell stories, shake my fist and complain a bit. Cable Vision, MN and YouTube, watch me on Shalom, damn it, damn it. Dave's gone by. Ah, uh, 
yes, there goes the neighborhood. It does go by so quickly. So so sad to see it go. But I uh, had so much fun tonight talking to Avi Hoffman and hearing the rabbi actually discourse with Avi. So everybody go see Two Jewish at the Port Washington Gene Rimsky Theater this month for, for three weeks starting on the 12th. Definitely check it out. And also go to avihoffman.com for more about Avi and what he does. Everybody, also please go to davesgoneby.org, my website, for more information about this program and how you can hear older shows anytime for free. We have dozens of them. In fact, every episode going back to 2004 are now all online for you to hear at davesgoneby.org. And also, please, if you like this show or if you have some suggestions, drop me an email at davesgoneby at AOL.com. That's D-A-V as in Victor, E-S, goneby at AOL.com. That's also the uh, address if you have queries about advertising. If you want to put your money, what little money there is in this country right now, into this show to get your message out to my listeners. Dave's gone by at AOL.com. Thank you to our sponsors, Woodrow Delicatessen, open seven days a week, kosher, delicious delicatessen food from the Woodrow, from Romanian tenderloin to roast beef and tongue and chickens and knishes. Ugh, delicious stuff. Go to Woodrow Deli.com. Leave off that second W for wonderful food at the Woodrow. Also, Unit Minuteman Press, the copy kings of Broadway, located at 1315 Broadway in Hewlett. 10% off for all Dave's Gone By listeners at Minuteman. 569-5577 is their phone number in the 516 area code. 516-569-5577 for Unit Minuteman Press. 10% off for Dave's Gone By listeners on any job. Big or small. Performing Arts Insider, the Bible of Broadway since 1944. Please go to performingartsinsider.com to find out more about this incredible theater journal and go to davesgoneby.org to find out about the discount that listeners get if they subscribe. It's really kind of huge. So check it out, performingartsinsider.com. And finally, fancy schmancy balloons to make your party wonderful. 516-797-3229. That's 516-797-3229. And also, everybody check out totaltheater.com for thousands of reviews and feature stories about the theater from all over the world. TotalTheater.com. Want to remind everybody, come down to the Times Square Arts Center Saturday night at 6, every Saturday night at 6, to see me hosting StageBuddy.com's weekly night live. We have a blast every single week. We mix theater people, musicians, magicians, stand-up comedians. It's really a whole lot of fun, and people are really enjoying it. You can find out more at StageBuddy.com, and you can even see a trailer. You can see what I look like. Right by there, just clicking on stagebuggy.com. So check it out. Also, please watch Rabbi Saul Solomon's show, Shalom, Damn It, his Peace, Love, and Acid Reflux Hour on YouTube anytime at all. It's also on local cable vision and MNN, but you can find all that information on davesgoneby.org. Um, very quickly, also want to do a couple of quick things, say condolences to uh, people who have been on the show a couple of years ago. A musician named Soda of the band His Mighty Robot and uh, his his colleague in the band, H. Rocker, they lost their drummer uh, a couple of weeks ago. His, his name was George, and he committed suicide on February 20th. So um, the drummer was not our guest on the show. They had a different different drummer back then. But we certainly wish the best and condolences to Soda and H. Rocker and the His Mighty Robot people and hope that they, they go forward and make some more music and uh, dedicate it to, obviously, this, this troubled person in their band. Also, I want to wish a Rafua Shlema to Peter Tork, who was a guest twice on this program, the former monkey musician. He has a rare form of cancer on his tongue that is usually actually in the salivary glands, but his prognosis is good, and he had surgery this week to help. So, God willing, he'll be fine, it'll be good, and we will talk to him, tongue and all, sometime in the months ahead. God willing, good luck to Peter Talk. Thank you so much to all of you for listening to Mom and Dad Lefkowitz, my folks, to Jeff Goodman having a wonderful time in Thailand, wishing him back here for the next show. I think he'll be back in time for that. To Albie Hoffman and also Peter Cromerty for setting up that interview. Thank you so much. We are 
going to be back, I think, um, if not next week, certainly the week after. I might be out of town. But you've got to check davesgoneby.org to find out when and what will be the next episode of this program. Time to leave the neighborhood now, but I'll be back soon for the 307th episode of Dave's Gone By. Until then, don't miss your days going by. This is Dave Lefkowitz wishing you good night. Pour him some air and save your daylight because we don't have much else to save these days. And gone by. Poor man said, who ever heard of a Jewish lumberjack? Do you have any experience? What says, <laughs> do I have experience? Of course, I have a lot of experience. <laughs> Did you ever hear of the Sahara Forest? Poor man says, what kind of Sahara? <laughs> you mean the Sahara Desert? What says, sure, now. <laughs> Even in Africa. Everywhere. We are everywhere. China. There are Jews in China. And the rabbi looked at me and said, You Jew? <laughs> I said, What kind of a question is that? Of course I am. He said, Funny, you no look Jewish. <laughs> I was also very amazed to learn that there were a lot of Jewish cowboys. Cowboy chicks. Yippee, oi, I can see it now. The first Jewish woman president-elect, Tiffany Schwartz, <laughs> standing at the podium, her hand on the Bible, her mother sitting in the front row, surrounded by world leaders. The daughter is taking the oath of office, and the mother turns to the prime minister of Israel, sitting right next to her. She says, you see that girl with her hand on the Bible? <laughs> Her brother is a doctor. So I'd like to end with a tribute to some of the Jewish comedians and a few of the jokes that made them famous. Just take a look how they shuffle along. Pray love and happy, they're singing a song. If they keep shuffling, they'll be here real soon. Rambling with the Moskowitz moon. Five, six, seven, eight. Come on, let's have a muscle ball. Come on, let's have a muscle ball. Come on, let's have a muscle ball. Come on, let's have a muscle ball.